Now there's a bit of a, a lag time. Yeah. I know it says we're live. I'm not actually on. Oh, look who's here to join us today. <laughs> Hi, Elfie. Elfie. Hi. Elfie. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Pamela, you talk about your blog while I just do this for a second, okay? okay. I'm going to mute myself for a second. Okay, um, so talk about my blog. I did not know that that was possibly going to be at the very beginning of this call. Uh, <laughs> okay, you don't have to talk about your blog. Uh, We'll just wait for a couple of people to join us. I know a couple of people signed up <clears throat> to listen to your fantasticness. And I just want to make sure that we get people here so that we can see and that people understand what we're doing today on FB Live. We're being cute is what we're doing. Right? <laughs> All right. I'm live. It says I'm live says we're live. There's a 20 second delay, just so you know. Okay. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. I don't even know why I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous. You know what? Nervousness is excitement without breath, right? Okay. So we are live. My name is Siddiqui Ray, and this is Soul Portrait Transformations or Self Image Transformations oh! or Hashtag invisible. <laughs> so Pamela, why don't you just introduce yourself here for a second? Um, Pamela is my guest today on our first ever interview series. And Elfie is super excited and rowdy about it. And um, <laughs> we're sending Elfie out into the world because she's going she's gonna to continue to want to have her say in this interview. Uh, but anyway, Pamela, I'm so excited that you're here today. Thank you for joining me. You look lovely. Yay. Thank you. Um, thanks for having me. Um, so my name is Pamela Shea and, uh, I don't really know what to say about myself other than I am one of the first students. Is, do, can I say that? I'm one of Siddiqui's first students this year in her soul portrait masterclass, um, program, which means that I will be training very closely with Siddiqui for the next year plus um, to learn how to also become a soul portrait photographer. Um, and I started out as one of her clients and I had my first and only shoot with her as of now, <laughs> um, back in December, um, like right around your birthday, right? Yeah, right. And- um, The big 2-0. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, on Siddiqui's 20th birthday, this past <laughs> December, um, I did my, I did a shoot with her. And ever since then, my life has just steadily been just accelerating and getting better and better and better in like every single way possible, like relationships, body image, spirituality, um, what are the other ways <laughs> uh, financially um, just, yeah. In all the ways, everything has been transforming slowly, but surely, and actually very quickly and surely. Yeah. That I mean, December, that wasn't that long ago. So the reason why I wanted to have you on this, my first ever live interview, uh, the, hopefully the first of many, and you'll probably be back on again. Oh, let me take off my glasses. You'll probably be back on again when I really figure out this format more. But I called this, this interview today, Lost Soul Has a Stroke of Insight. So I'm really excited for you to share with people, not just about the soul portrait process, but how you went from where you were when I first met you to where you are now. Because in this seven months, eight months, there's been just such a rapid change in who you are and what I see before me. And I just wanted to bring you on and have you talk about how in the beginning, what it was like when we first met and when you first saw the work, but more importantly, 
Like what, what has shifted for you? Because honestly, this is about inspiring other people. And I think mm -hmm. that you're an amazing example of someone that's had a lot of adversity, some very specific adversity, and that you've found a way to like turn it around so that you can be of service. And you've really transformed who you are as a result of not just me in this process, but in your life. And I think it's just stunning. I think your journey is just amazing. And I'm so honored to have you as my first guest today. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. So let's just start with this. Let's start with... Um, you mentioned to them already that you're in the Soul Portrait Masterclass, and we'll get to what that is later on. But let's just start with like where you were in terms of photography, like where you started and uh, what, what experience you had both in front of the camera and behind the camera, because I think that that's a really big part of your story. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so do you want me to talk about my personal um, like the, the physical sure. part of my story yeah. first. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Whatever you want. There's no, okay. no holds bar. Whatever comes to you intuitively is the right thing. <laughs> We're all okay. about intuition, right? Okay. Well, so now is actually a really special time for me because last um, Saturday, this past Saturday, the seventh was my marks 15 years wow. since the day that I had a stroke when I was 19 years old. And it just like, it was this completely life-changing thing because it wasn't just like um, a little thing where I was in the hospital for like three days and then I got better. It was literally like I was completely a healthy, very physically active, um, very able-bodied human being who loved um, volleyball, dance, running, um, theater, et cetera, et cetera. And then all of a sudden, like just one day out of nowhere, um, half of my body just went completely offline, like total paralysis on the side of my body, the left side of my body. And um, I was in the hospital from July 7th until September 25th of that year. So it's like, what, two and a half months or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I had previously been really, really healthy, like never went to the doctor ever, had never even had a single headache really. And, um, the way that that stroke transformed my life, like, or maybe, maybe didn't transform my life, but it, it really was like an interruption because <laughs> it was completely not in the plan. You know, I was 19 years old, thought right. I was invincible, thought I could do anything, you know, I like all of a sudden I had lost function of half of my body and all these new things started coming up. Maybe they weren't really that new. They, they were probably always there, but it just like became much worse and much more amplified because of the stroke, mm -hmm. such as like, well, who am I now? Who am I now now that I can't take care of myself in the same way anymore? Who am I now to my family? Who am I now to my friends? Will I ever find love? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. you know, just, just yeah. lots of really big things that like are always under the surface that I think any person coming of age um, deals with, but it was just so much more, um, I guess, dramatic. And, you know, and it just was very, very challenging for me to basically give birth to myself as a young adult and um, still do or still be able, try to be able to do the things that I wanted to do in my life. Mm -hmm. And, um, slowly, slowly, you know, thankfully, because I was so young, um, I bounced back pretty quickly. I mean, I'm still not a hundred percent back to how I was physically before, but I'm probably about 75% of the way uh -huh. back. Um, and, <clears throat> um, and it really, I feel like the stroke just kind of accelerated a lot of life lessons, like, mm. Uh, for me. And I, I got into a lot of pain and suffering in terms of, I got involved with this one guy who ended up being sort of emotionally abusive. And he would like even use my stroke against me. Like he would treat me like I was a burden and he'd be like, look, I didn't, he basically would be like, I didn't sign up to be like in a relationship with a handicap and like, 
he would ask me for ridiculous things like, can you stop taking your seizure medication? Cause it makes your breath smell, you know, <laughs> like really not great things. Um, and so I had to really like claw my way out of a lot of this stuff that just made me feel really, really horrible about myself and really look at it. And these, like the succession of, of lots and lots of pain actually really, I think it awoke something in me where I eventually just like, it took me really a long time. It took me like a course of years, but eventually, like, I think I just got so sick of enduring how difficult my life was mm -hmm. and feeling so badly about myself that I think my higher self and, you know, my soul just like awakened and was like, there's got to be something better than this. Yeah. So that's what kind of like set me off on my path to um, personal development and then eventually spirituality and, um, you know, a lot of the, the, a lot of the stuff that we like woo woo people are into now that's how it all started because I was you know I did I wasn't raised spiritual or religious or anything before and n nor is my family at all into personal development mm -hmm. but this is what basically set me up for that and so those were like kind of the formative years of who I became as an adult and then um I got involved in this amazing group that really I'm still part of today. And it's an amazing group coaching environment where we hone a lot of like intimacy skills and a lot of um, feminine energy and everything. And then I just kind of like, this is all on me. This is not due to the group, but I allowed myself to get really, really lost in, you know, the like, oh, I just want to like hang out and luxuriate. And I just want to be in feminine energy all the time. And I still love it but I got way out of balance and I just kind of like stopped really truly making progress in my life professionally. Like I had this immense calling, this fire in my belly saying like, you need to make a difference in the world. You need to do something with your life. Like then I, you know, I, I then realized I wanted to, you know, I wanted to use my stroke experience to um, inspire people. And I started writing about it. I started working on a memoir that literally I was write, writing for a zillion years and never finished. And I started blogging about it. Um, and I thought, you know, oh, the blog is going to be uh, my platform and I'm just going to build that. But then eventually I also learned that like, it is not all that sexy to talk about stroke. And a lot of times people will be like, oh, well, I didn't have a stroke. So this isn't relevant to me. Mm. And so then I was starting, I was starting to flail mm. and, um, and then last year I decided to, um, hire like an individual coach. And one of the greatest things I've ever done was having her supplement the feminine energy group because she helped me bring a lot of healthy masculine back mm. into my life. Mm -hmm. And so I was starting to come out of that, like, oh, I'm not really doing anything, even though I say that I'm doing stuff. But, um, and that was really great. Um, and so then back in November, I went to this event called Call to Lead with Siddiqui's best friend. My BFF, um, Jeffrey Van Dyke. Yes, her BFF, oh, Jeff. Jeffrey Van Dyke, who's amazing. Genius, and, just a genius. And, and speaks to my soul, yeah. like in ways that nobody else has. And I met Siddiqui there, who was there as the photographer. And um, eventually... Um, and speaker, people, yes. And, and a speaker and people were like, people were like, Hey, um, can we hear more about what is a soul portrait? Mm -hmm. And so we got Siddiqui on the stage and she started talking about it. And I was just like, <laughs> like, as, as she was talking about it, I just like, was like falling out of my seat, like, just kind of like leaning forward and like, Oh my gosh, that sounds like the best thing in the entire world. <laughs> please tell me more tell me more tell me more I I think I definitely need to do one and um and so I think that brings me to the part about um my background in photography mm -hmm. um it's not super extensive like Siddiqui's is but um for probably about two years or more maybe a little bit over two years here in my local area in Chicago I um 
served on the teams of two different boudoir photography um, photographers. <laughs> um, and uh, so the first for the first one, I was like her blogger. And so I was working just on her marketing. And I worked for her for probably like a year. And then I moved on to another studio where I started out in marketing and then eventually I became the production manager and like sort of assistant person at the studio. And that was what I did full time for a long time as well, um, maybe like a year and a half. And um, I really, really all that time, I just kind of like under the surface, I was really passionate about boudoir photography because I could see how amazing it was for women who maybe didn't feel super sexy to, you know, have their photograph taken professionally and for them to look at themselves on the, um, on the screen and just be like, Oh my God, I've never ever seen myself as beautiful until this very moment. And it was just like amazing to, to watch the women get empowered. And I also like, there's a part of me that was always like the theater girl and I love performing and I, and I used to be on stage, you know, I used to dance and I used to act and everything. So like, I loved also being photographed. Um, so I had, I think probably like three or four different shoots while I was working at the last one. Mm -hmm. um, and I was kind of like, I was kind of trained a little bit to do a little bit of the photography, which was actually, you know, because I thought that it was so valuable to um, go through that process for women. I wanted to bring it mm -hmm. to women too. Um, it, it's not like I was, I was like, Hey boss, I would really like to create a business just like yours. I was definitely like on the support team, but like, it was always this like secret dream that I had mm. that I wanted to bring forth. And actually funny enough, I, maybe some of you guys know that Siddiqui is like super psychic and sees a lot of things that, um, <laughs> is, like really freaky how much she sees in people. <laughs> but the right. yeah. first, the first day I met Siddiqui, she was like, I see some kind of internship relationship between us um, in the future. Yeah. And like at the time, I was like, Wait, what are you talking about? Like, what? Me? Like, I was like, I, and I remember even saying to her, like, you know, photography is just something that like I'm kind of interested in, but I really haven't done it in a while. And so it's not really something that I'm like looking to hone right now. Mm -hmm. You know, so she saw like this greater version of me already, like from the day she met me that I didn't see at the time. Um, I have a question about that. Yeah. Are you okay yeah. with, so we're talking, if people are just joining us, uh, welcome. This is Sadiqi Ray and Pamela Shea. We're here on the FB Live and we're talking about Pamela's uh, going from being a lost soul really to this stroke of insight that she's had that hasn't just been like one specific moment. It's, it's a whole transformational process, which is really what we're talking about here on the show is how to transform your vision of yourself, your perception of yourself. So Pamela, is it all right with you if I show the audience your, what I would say your before picture, your not full on boudoir picture, because we don't want this to be like an X-rated show. I <laughs> might want it to be an X-rated show. Um, we might um, get yeah. censored by Facebook if we do that. But can I just show like one of the pictures that you had by one of these very competent um, boudoir photographers back uh, in the day. Back is that okay? Day. You sure that? Yes, that's fine. Okay, great. So that's absolutely fine. Here's here's the photo. How long ago was this taken? Um, maybe like three or four years ago, even. Okay. Maybe okay. yeah, probably probably in twenty. 13 or 14. So yeah, it's been a while. And when you see this image of yourself, what, what do you feel? What do you see? If you were to like read who that person is in that image, what would you say about her? Um, I would just, I, I feel like in this photo, I look a little empty, like, mm -hmm. um, almost even like a doll that somebody just posed and put into position and then took a photo of. I mean, I, I'm not like critiquing the photo itself. I think it's a fine photo, like technically. I just feel like 
looking at myself, I don't really get a sense of like who I am uh -huh. in that photo. Uh huh. And I know that you shared your parents' reaction to this group of photos, especially your father's. And I'm wondering if you want to talk a little bit about that. <laughs> um, well, so my very first ever boudoir shoot um, that I did, I actually did with my boyfriend. And so we did a couple shoot because I, I felt like I needed the, the emotional support um, of not being the only person in front of the camera. And it, it ended up being a, a great shoot. It was so much fun. Um, and uh, as a gift, as part of the session, she would give us an eight by 10 uh, print of, you know, of your, cho your, your choosing the, your favorite one. And so I chose one that was, it was not at all X rated. Okay. It's like, it's basically from like the mid chest up. Okay. Um, but it's my boyfriend and me like embracing and it just like, it has like a, a heat to it. It definitely has like a steamy quality mm -hmm. to the feel of the photo, the mood. Um, and my father, when I was still living in my parents' house, came across it one day. <laughs> like, uh -oh. like he, I mean, he was literally going through my stuff for no reason. And like, that's it a wasn't whole like, other issue. Parent yeah. boundaries. We're not going to go there. And yeah. Interview. <laughs> yeah. Like it wasn't like I had it just lying around, but right. he came across it and he flipped the F out. Um, Why? He was just because I, I mean, I think my dad just has these expectations of me and my sister that we remain completely pure and untouched until we get married. Okay. And, uh, I mean, I think he has explicitly said that to us before and, um, he just got so infuriated. He was like, never, ever bring him around again. He is not welcome in my house. He just never wanted to see. And th by the way, literally today is our seven and a half year anniversary. Yay! <laughs> so like, obviously there was no way my dad was going to keep him away from our house. <laughs> like he just freaked out because, and he was so mad and just projecting all these expectations onto both of us. And like, I mean, we hadn't been together super long. Maybe we had only been together for a year at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like that is a huge, a huge, um, Kind of like response around how your parents see yeah. you, how they perceive you, how they want you to be, right? Yeah. So then let's let's talk about what changed. Uh, what changed in your perception of yourself, maybe what changed in your relationship as a result of seeing yourself differently. Now, is it okay if I share with the people that are watching your actual soul portrait, which they're kind of already getting a peek up there on the right? <laughs> yeah, that's, okay. that's totally so, great. Yeah. So here's one of the ones and you guys will see me as I scroll through these, but when you were in the moment of the photo shoot, um, obviously having worked at a boudoir two boudoir photography studios, like really well-known boudoir photography studios and seeing a lot of photo shoots happen and having your own professional photo shoots, did you feel like there was a difference in, in the moment that you were getting these photos done? And if so, what was that? There's a huge, huge difference between uh, the two experiences. Mm -hmm. I feel like, um, you, I mean, they're like not, obviously there's so many of them, they're not seeing them all, but like I feel like you can see in these photos that I'm much more in my body. I'm much more present mm -hmm. and that they're much more raw. Like mm -hmm. I feel like, especially the one on the left right now. Um, this one. Uh, yeah, this yeah. one, I feel like this one captures me and a softness um, that is in my body that often I probably guard against people seeing like this, this side of me is a very real side of me, but I don't think that it's ever usually captured on camera. And why, and so why I, is that? Do you think like, what, what do you think would be behind you not showing any of these sides of you in front of the camera maybe to the world actually? Right. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of resistance around um, being fully visible. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and what I mean by fully visible is, I mean, like, we're like, we're all whole and we all feel a vast and infinite range of different emotions. And we have softness and hardness and we have, you know, joy and we have despair. We have light and dark. Like we have everything at the ends and everything in between. And I, I know for me, a lot of times I can suffer from a, a sort of perfectionism that mm. comes from like wanting to show up. Like, I mean, this was my, my life coach was the one that pointed this out to me that I can become overly concerned about showing up to the person that I'm in front of or the people as like I show up and what I subconsciously want to do is I want to show up for you the way that I think that you want me to be. So yeah. it's like yeah. this whole agreement where like, I'm trying to guess what you expect of me. And then I also try to mold myself to meet those expectations. So if there are people who expect me to be perfect, like always cheerful, then I will keep on like a cheerful mask, you know, and then it, in front of those people, I won't feel, I won't give myself the permission to like take down that mask and really access that softness of that picture that we were just talking about. Yeah. And, you know, I want to say something about that. I, I encounter this all of the time as a photographer, the minute you put someone in front of the lens, what you come up against is that mask that you were referring to that, that really well rehearsed part of us. That's like, who do I need to be for you to see me, to, for you to love me, for you to know me, for you to accept me to, so that I belong. And we have this, and myself included, a lot of the women I deal with in particular have this perfectionism of if I can only be good enough uh, in whatever way that is, maybe it's their weight, maybe it's their, their face, their age, what they're wearing. If I can just be this thing, then I will get what I've always craved to have, which is a feeling of it's okay to be me. And I know that when we first met that you said that you were, you had this one word that you used to describe yourself. That's very millennial actually. And I don't know if you want to. Uh -oh. <laughs> what was that word? <laughs> come on, come on. What's the word? So um, the word is extra extra. Yeah. And, yeah. and what I mean, it mean to you to be extra. So, I mean, depending on the person that you talk to, cause I have actually come, come across other, like I've come across people who are like much more millennial than I am. Um, I'm like the oldest kind of millennial really. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, like I've come across some like true millennials who, when they hear, like, I, I say like, Oh, this is extra. And so am I. They'll be like, uh, or, or if they hear that my best friend told me that I was so extra, they'll be like, oh, that was really harsh. Uh, and they take it as like a negative. But I actually, as a result of like the coaching and the soul portrait process with Tadiki, I've actually really stepped into owning the fact that like, yeah, I am a little extra. And, you know, and to me, extra isn't so much like I'm uh, like, it isn't so much. I'm just uh, a waste of space and I'm just here using up the resources and therefore unwanted and blah, 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 like all that fun stuff. <laughs> Extra to me is like bonus. Like I, I see it as like, yeah, I'm a little over the top. Um, you know, even sometimes my boyfriend, uh, he doesn't really relate because he's really not extra, but <laughs> Uh, when I am like going a little over the top, cause I'm very expressive and you know, like, I feel like, I feel like theater geeks and everything we can, we can spot each other in a room anywhere. Uh, we're just very expressive, very animated. And like, we love to be seen, you know, I think up to till a certain point. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's really not to interrupt, but I just want to capture that point because one of the, the core points of pain of the people that I work with in the soul portrait process is this feeling of well, you're calling it extra and I'm calling it like I'm too much. And yeah. it's this, this double bind of like, I want to be seen and I want the attention, but there's a part of me that's like, it's not okay to want to be seen and want that attention. And yeah. it kind of chokes me up because 
that's how I lived. I was that like theatrical kid. And my parents were like, stop lying, stop exaggerating, stop, you know, be, yeah. trying to be the center of attention. And then, so for the rest of my life, I tried to like rein that in and make myself smaller, but it's like, I could never be small enough yeah. um, to, to remove that craving. And it was never like, nothing I ever did was satiating. And when you came to me and you talked to me about working in these boudoir photography studios and having this stroke and feeling lost. And, and actually at the time you were, um, you had opted into some make money fast on the internet scheme. And, but you, you were kind of a lost soul in the sense that it wasn't, it wasn't getting you, it wasn't really fully expressing all of who you are. And that's what happens when we crush ourselves down to fit the expectations of others to, to people please so that we get the love and attention that we desire, that we also simultaneously are trying to push away and, and disinherit those pieces of ourselves that we're like putting in the closet. It's like they're, they're rearing their ugly heads at all the wrong times. And I know one of the areas that you were really feeling stifled in was your purpose, was how to make money. And I don't know if anybody else can relate to this because I think that there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that are like, what, what can I do to make money? Um, but I'm not going to really show all of who I am because nobody wants that. Nobody wants that piece of me, right? Yeah. Um, so I just want to refer back to what happened during your soul portrait because it was really a surprise to me and it was a very intimate moment if it's okay for me to share that about the the kind of what i'm calling the archetype soul portrait sure you can you can share that for sure yeah so as a as a person that's i'm an intuitive aka psychic and a photographer and as i'm doing the photo session i'm getting all these like downloaded images just like uh, reading a picture book and seeing all these images of the person. And as I was shooting Pamela, of course, I saw this very vulnerable side, this very beautiful side. You're very beautiful and a strength, a power. But then we went down to the beach and it was sunset. And, um, and I saw these images that I'm going to share now that were like other, it was otherworldly you know, the lights, the orbs of lights were there because of the reflection on the lenses, but you had this, this presence of self-love that really touched me knowing your story and knowing how much you had struggled after the stroke to see you really loving your body, really inhabiting your physicality after it had been such a struggle, really, really touched me. And I think I was like crying <laughs> camera and autofocus. I'm even a little weepy now because there was some, there was a beauty in it. And what came to me was Quan Yin, who is the goddess of compassion, the goddess of empathy. And she, she's often seen riding in on a tidal wave of water, which symbolizes a tidal wave of power of compassion, of her compassion for the suffering of the world. And I saw that in you and I saw, and I, I saw that in these images of you really coming forward as this force to be reckoned with as this. And I'm looking this way because I have this big monitor. If you guys are watching this, this force to be reckoned with as the ultimate compassion that you have developed for yourself as a result mm. of this process. And I was just so moved by the beauty of that, which is in you and which you have cultivated. And that I was seeing, I was awe inspired. So this is when, you know, that part of you that was lost, like the piece of your soul that was lost. I feel like you reclaimed that in this moment and you, you brought yourself back to the totality and the wholeness of who you really are as a, as an essential part of yourself as a being and you, you embodied it. I mean, you look at these pictures and you're like, yeah, it's there. So that was mm. my reaction. What was your reaction? It may be in the moment of this experience or when you saw these images. 
Well, I do remember the beach being super duper cold. (laughs) (laughs) And and, um, so because of that, and also because we were like in public, Mm -hmm. uh, not that there were a lot of people there, but because of the, the discomfort of the actual experience of being on the beach and having to like hold myself there while it was quite cold. And also the added pressure of like, oh, there are some strangers here who can see me too. Um, I think I was feeling a little bit extra vulnerable um, at the time while these photos were being taken. But with um, some of your like, like direction or coaching, I I don't know what to call it. Um, Some of your feedback that you were giving me while you were photographing me, this part of me that I literally have I have felt many, many times in my life, like especially during my spiritual practice while self-soothing, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Like these are skills that I've developed over time. Um, I've not always had them. Uh, I guess, you know, Kuan Yin, who to me is the divine mother, um, Mm -hmm. she, she came through me and that was what you captured. And, and then when you showed me these photos, like in the car ride on the way back, I was just completely awestruck because I have, I had felt that energy inside of me many, many times, but I had never, ever seen, seen it for myself. And interestingly enough too, um, after this shoot, and I was looking through the photos with my boyfriend, he actually, in one of the pictures, he said to me, you kind of look like your mother in this one. Mm -hmm. And that blew me away too, because in my entire life, Neither on camera nor in the mirror or ever have I ever seen my mother in me before. And I really feel like the reason why it came through in the photo is because of what, what energy was channeling through my body at the time. And so I, when I, I also, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Just when I look at like this final photo that we're looking at, I feel like it's really, really powerful. Like it has a softness and it has a strength to it at the same time Mm -hmm. and, and a wildness, you know, like, I feel like this photo kind of encompasses a lot of like what I am and who I am at all at the same time. And that's so rare to see in a photograph. So what do you feel is possible? I also want to just mention something that's really interesting about Pamela and I, as we're looking in the back of the car, my assistant is driving us and we're looking in the back of the camera. We're driving along the, the 10, if you've ever been in LA, total mess of traffic. Of course, everything in LA is a mess of traffic, but um, we're looking at this specific image. And what do we see, Pamela? What do we see on the side of the road? <laughs> a burning bush or like a tree. A burning tree, a, yeah. a huge tree. And it's just engulfed. On fire. <laughs> like it's biblical of biblical proportions. Yeah. <laughs> And then we were reviewing the images and we were talking about the soul portrait masterclass. And I just want to talk about that for a moment, but we were talking about how I had this vision of you taking, taking your, like really embodying the message for your people, like the people that you are meant to serve embodying the message. And what would it be like to be a photographer? Because I know you have photographic skills to be a photographer and to actually help women heal their bodies through a soul portrait that's a boudoir image, you know, doing boudoir photography with the soul added. And what what was happening? What was happening? Oh, um, apparently we manifested a really large earthquake over there (laughs) on your end. (laughs) So we're just talking about, you know, soul portrait masterclass. And um, which is me training you to be a soul portrait photographer and in specific for you doing it with boudoir photography. And there is a massive earthquake here in LA. And I'm like, oh my God. Uh, your, your partner, Anthony, was like, boy, when the two of you get together, there's just like heaven and earth move. Um, and I think that for me, I interpret that as we are so in alignment with who you are and in supporting that vision that you know, we're moving heaven and earth to get you to that place where you're expressing all of your extraness out in the world as a force for good, as a force for change. Yes, absolutely. 
So we need to wrap up here in a minute or two. And if you're watching live, if you have any questions, if you have any comments for us, this would be a great time to just type them in. And uh, I will, I will, when I'm glancing down, I'm looking at what you guys are saying and I will bring it to uh, Pamela. If you have any questions for Pamela or for myself, but Pamela, talk to me about the soul portrait masterclass. So there was your experience having the soul portrait. And then there was this vision of you actually bringing it out into the world yourself as a photographer. What do you, how does that fit with being lost and, and finding yourself, finding your vision? Well, I feel like when you, when you first met me, I definitely, um, you know, I was definitely on a journey of self-love, but my, the final piece had not been put into the puzzle yet. Mm -hmm. And that piece was like, exactly how am I going to bring, um, my gifts and stuff into the world? Like what, what kind of, what kind of business am I going to create, um, in order to help the people that I want to help? Um, knowing that like all of this work that I've been doing is actually, going to benefit people in an official like professional capacity and um i feel like being having been the subject of a soul portrait um being able to see who i really am mm -hmm. on a photograph really kind of inherently gave me in conjunction with the the visibility coaching that came with the shoot um, it really sort of inherently gave me a permission to bring all of me forward out into the world and for me to love myself at an even deeper level. Mm -hmm. And, and it was like the most, it was the most authentic experience in a photo shoot that I had ever experienced. Um, comparing to all of my previous, like I was telling Siddiqui's assistant one time, like over the phone, I just told her like Siddiqui has completely ruined me for all the photographers <laughs> because, because like it's just sorry, was so sorry. different. <laughs> it was just so different because I mean I've had a lot of professional photo shoots before, but the thing was it was always like very highly directed. Like it was like put your arm here, look that way, smile, look look this way, tilt your head forward, blah 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 blah. You know, like it was just very like. I'm a doll, please pose me. And in your words, Sadiqi, that's like self-objectification mm -hmm. where it's like, I'm not even really here. I'm just like here for you to move. And like, and it's not, you know, like the photos are great, but if you really hone in on the person's energy, like it's no secret that posing for boudoir photography is actually a really uncomfortable thing physically. Like it's not just emotionally uncomfortable, but it's like it's a workout because you're holding the position so for so long. And so I feel like the result is they're great photographs, but there's not really like true embodiment. And in our shoot, um, we even, I mean, there's, there's one outfit that we didn't include in that little mini gallery yeah, that we showed you guys. See that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one that it's I wasn't expecting to do X for a reason. <laughs> X rated X factor. Yeah. Yeah. We're not showing yeah. those. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm, we're not showing those, but I, and I wasn't expecting to do it, but Siddiqui brought it out in me and I had never felt more like empowered and more really, really in my body with the energies that were like appropriate for those photos, like actually in my body as I was being photographed. And so it just, I don't know. I feel like it just gave me permission to like be who and what I am unapologetically as like cliche as that might sound. It's different when I experienced it. Yeah, and we, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just wanted oh, to I, say one thing there is like when we were talking afterwards and looking at the images of the soul portrait X, which is not you completely nude, but just a, a different side of you, you were wearing a specific outfit and it was the very sexy, powerful side of you. And we talked about it afterwards. And you said something that I think is so pertinent to a lot of women is that we're talking about this self-image dysmorphia, like how we don't see ourselves correctly. But more importantly, I was saying, like, if you're going to do the boudoir photography and the soul part of it, like bringing the soul into the image, bringing 
uh, who the person really is out, then, then what we came upon, and you said this, so I'm just reiterating your words, is that really the double bind of your tribe, the, the push, pull, the, the two sides of the same coin is that they really, why are we getting boudoir photographs? Because we want to see that we're beautiful. We want to see that it's okay to be powerful in our sensuality and, and you know, anybody that's following popular news now, you're looking at the women in Iran that are dancing and um, dancing in their Instagram posts and whatnot and, you know, being imprisoned and fined and, and the Me Too movement, the whole like discrimination and what it, what it brought up for us as we were discussing that as women is we want to be seen, we want to be known, we want to be loved, we want to be powerful in our sensuality, and yet to do so makes us a bigger target, right? So the more intimate, the more vulnerable, the more sensual you are to some of us, that has meant victimhood. And so how is, how is this whole process helping you to reclaim who you really are? from a place of power and empathy for the part of you that was a victim at some point in some way, shape or form. Right. So that's what we were, we're talking about, like, why get a boudoir photograph? Why add the soul? And what does it really heal? What does it resolve? And that that's what we came to. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like the, um, the experience of the soul getting a soul portrait shoot is an incredibly safe environment where there's no like I'm becoming a target in that moment it's just I have I can be whatever it is that I want to be and I think a lot of people just really never let themselves go there Mm -hmm. so having the embodied experience of there's this side of me that I keep under wraps that I don't ever show to anybody but I'm showing you know, you, the photographer right now in this very contained, very intimate and, you know, like isolated sort of container um, situation. It's like, even though it's, it's small and it's contained and it's not like there's a whole audience watching, like at least for you, I think for you to be able to see yourself for the first time and really get to know yourself in that way. And to feel I think safe in yourself, right? To feel safe yeah. in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that only increases self-love and self-acceptance, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, to be able to see it yeah. for the first time. Yeah. Even seeing if you is, seeing is believing, you know, I always say, see yourself, be yourself. And when you see that reality and the image of you being strong and powerful, whether it be the Kuan Yin image or just the forward facing headshot or the soul portrait X, it's like, then you can be that. Right. And that's the ultimate empowerment is embodying that and feeling safe where maybe you didn't feel safe as you know, because of what you experienced with the stroke. Yeah. So I just, I want to really honor our time here and I want to thank you so, so, so much for being willing to just really open up and share about all of these things that we've talked about here today. And I want to invite the audience to keep tuning in every Wednesday at 9am. You'll, we'll be here with another interview next week. I have someone that's so amazing, a man that works in corporate America And the name of his interview is No More Mr. Nice Guy, how his soul portrait (laughs) took him from uh, people pleasing nice to really being an empowered leader. So that's next week, Wednesday at 9 a.m. If you are interested in either your own soul portrait or this soul portrait masterclass that we're talking about, learning how to merge your intuition with your creative skills and really make a viable business about it, uh, Facebook Messenger me and we'll talk. If you're not... If you haven't gotten the free meditation, we didn't even talk about the free meditation, but uh, <laughs> go to my website, Siddiqui Ray, S-I-D-D-I-Q-I-R-A-Y.com. We'll put the link below and you can get a free meditation that will help you get into this state of being tuned in and being Wait. tapped into that power. What? Wait. Is your website Siddiqui Ray.com or is it Siddiqui Soul Ray.com? All roads lead to the same website. <laughs> Yeah, really? Oh, yeah. It's Siddiqui Soul Ray. It's Siddiqui Ray. It's 
I'm the only one out there. I'm the only Siddiqui that we know of. But <laughs> yeah. well, I'll put the link here in the conversation so that people can find it. So okay. Pamela, Shay, thank you so, so much for being in my life. Thank you for being a powerful example of what's possible when you overcome adversity and really come out of the closet as extra and just own it. <laughs> I think it's really, yeah. it's amazing. It's inspiring. You're amazing. And I look forward to seeing how that expresses itself over the next year in the Soul Portrait Masterclass. Yay. Thank Yay. you. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Bye. Bye.